I am so excited about this technical segment. Um, is that what that smell is? Yes. I wanted to say that intern Mike did a fantastic job. Uh, we acquired an Elix 6E1, which I will hold up for you on camera. We did the firewall fire engine red version of the Elix 6E1, an embedded x86 platform. Uh, which I am, uh, I'm pretty much in love with, it, really. <laughs> so we love FreeBSD. I kind of is that why it's got a really sticky port on one side? Yes, I've got uh, a Elix 6E1 here that I bought from Netgate.com. It is a hardware platform. It's got two, count them, two, <laughs> 10 100 uh, LAN ports, one mini PCI, PCI Express. It's an AMD LX800 processor, which is, like I said, x86. 256 megs of RAM, two USB ports, which you can see here, a DB9 serial port. It has a CF card slot. We got a kit, which I'll talk about in just a minute, uh, that comes with a 2 gig C uh, comeback flash card, and it is 6 inches by 6 inches. That's, that's what... Pretty small. She yes. So it's a very nice platform. Uh, this is the kit all assembled together that I'm holding up here on camera. Uh, very low power requirements. Wait, 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 where's the wireless antennas? And it's a firewall. Uh, so this right here, Larry, if you look at the camera, I don't know if you can see that. I can see that. There's a hole in the side because there is a mini PCI port. You can put wireless. Now, uh, I'm using it as a firewall, gotcha. so I didn't actually put any wireless. Now, I have another Elix board, which I've given to intern Darren, who's going to do some stuff with it and put it together. Uh, Darren's got his bag o elix bag o crap bag o elix over there. Uh, that one I included some mini PCI stuff so Darren can do wireless if he so mm. chooses. So this is the sexy red firewall which we've installed. PF Sense, which is a FreeBSD based project uh, that has been special purpose to use as either a firewall or router. It also has VPN support, which I'm pretty happy about. I actually plan to configure OpenVPN. You'll hear about that in a future technical segment. The project started in 2004 as a fork of an embedded firewall software package called Moonwall, which most of us are familiar with as well. Uh, PF Sense is focused uh, towards full PC installations rather than in the embedded focus of Moonwall. However, this embedded uh, system I here. I thought it was mono wall. Is it? Mo I always called it moon wall. There's only one zero. Oh, it is mono wall. I'm a <laughs> moron. Did I say you mono wall? You said it, not moon me. Wall? Yeah, I just. Yeah. I'm a little dyslexic. Looks dyslexic. Yeah. You've been drinking. I've been drinking. Okay, so there's documentation on the web. Um, it's a sweet red color that makes Larry crazy. Uh huh. And the <laughs> first step is that you need to break out your credit card. You need to go to netgate.com. You need to order the Elix 6E1 kit. It costs <coughs> roughly $175. I paid, I think, $10 shipping. It was $185, which is also roughly a box of Padron 7000 Maduro cigars, which are, are very tasty as well. But the kit includes an Elix 6E1 board, a laser-etched red aluminum sexy enclosure with two USB and an antenna cutout. Blake, oh, wait, what's it laser-etched with? I don't know. It says laser etched. Oh, is it because of the... the I don't know. You tell me, Larry. Okay. It says laser etched. Uh, a blank 2 gig SanDisk Ultra 2 CF card and a 15 volt 1.25 amp 18 watt power supply. Uh, you'll need a compact flash writer or reader writer, uh, which I have uh, for installing the PFSense operating system. We got one. Uh, the one we used cost $10 uh, or one. Padron 1926 series cigar. Next, <laughs> you will need the PF Sense operating system, <coughs> which is free, as well as a Windows wait, wait, utility. Free? How much does that cost? Uh, zero dollars. <laughs> no, wait, no. What does it say in the show notes? How much does that cost? Um, yeah, there's a lot of inflation going on right now. So, really, how much does that cost? So, free or like what a sexy bon blonde pays for a drink at a frat party. Ah, ah, okay. Mm. It sinks in for everyone. So you also need uh, Fizz Disk Write, which is again free software, which runs on Windows, which allows you to write the disk image to the compact flash card. Wait, Windows? Yeah, this one. I, okay. I don't know why they produced it in Windows, or published it, or wrote it for Windows. Kay. I'm sure that you could probably find. Uh, my plan was to use OS 10 or Linux and to use DD. But we had a Windows system here in the lab, and the <laughs> documentation. What? <laughs> yeah, we had a Windows system. Oh here. right, right. That's already pre-exploited. All right. I got yeah, it. yeah. There's a Windows system, and then uh, so what we did was uh, we just used that, and um, 
since it was in their documentation, it uh, it worked really well. Cool. And the screenshot uh, screenshots on the show notes and everything. So we needed to download the packages. So the embedded versions are specifically crafted for your compact flash card size. So we downloaded the two gig image. The uh, embedded versions can be found in the link in the show notes. The thir third step was to take the uh, image that we downloaded and write it to our CF card. The PFSense documentation was great. Like I said, we used a, Wii, uh, a Windows PC. As all our other boxes were busy um, analyzing porn, so we used the Windows box. Now, what, what exactly were they analyzing? I don't know. The following: uh, make sure you follow the documentation. Uh, this utility actually it's like DD, so it'll overwrite a hard drive. So if you select the wrong drive. It'll overwrite your hard drive, so make sure that you use the mm. right disk. And then it will overwrite all your porn. You don't want that. That would be bad. So here you can see it happening uh, where you overwrite the drive and actually write the image to the compact flash drive, which is really cool. Uh, the fourth step is to uh, a couple of options here. So once you get the uh, image written to the CF card, now I do caution you, the kit that I got uh, it was kind of funny. Mike put it all together and installed the CF card in it, you know, just to kind of fit it all together. You can't actually take the CF card out without removing the board from the case. Oh, so geez. Mike got all the screws screwed in, you know, the CF card in. And I'm like, cool. Now, did you write an operating system to that yet? He's like, no, not yet. I'm like, okay, well, take the CF card out. <coughs> it's like, well, I got to take all those screws out and then take the CF card <laughs> out and put it in the reader. Design fail. So just a word of the uh, to the wise. Uh, write the operating system to your CF card before you put the whole kit together. There's really not yep. that many screws. I mean, there's four screws that hold the, the board into the case, so it's all good. Uh, once you get it installed into the case, you will need a serial connection uh, for the, your PC to connect. The, so if you have a PC with a serial port... You, what? Use, you have a what now with a what? A PC with a serial port. Whoa. Yeah. It's like PC with a floppy drive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a PC with a serial port here, so we use Typer Terminal. I thought you were going to say you had a PC with a floppy drive. I was going. It might have a floppy, floppy drive too. It's really old and slow. Wow, Hyper kinda, Terminal. Kind of like me. Yeah, with Hyper Terminal, um, more modern version of that. If you have OS X, uh, you can use uh, a USB to serial adapter, which I have, mm -hmm. with a uh, software called Zterm. Or I've seen tutorials that show you how to configure a command line utility called Screen, which is a Linux yep. slash Unix utility called Screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Linux, it's Minicom is the uh, the serial. So if you have Linux, you can use that. Uh, if you have a Linux box with a serial adapter, or you can use the USB to serial adapter. There's also tons of other software for OS X that will do the uh, yeah. console program for you. And if you have Vista or Windows 7 that doesn't come with Hyper Terminal by default, you can use Putty. Ah, you can use putty, yes, to connect to the yep. COM port. Yeah, no, that's I, a good I point. like the way Carlos says it better. Pooty? Pooty. Kind of sounds like booty, <laughs> but with a P. So, <laughs> yeah. at, at the end of the day, you need a terminal program to interface with some kind of serial port, USB or the actual DB9 serial port on your old... I mean, that's really kind of a good excuse to keep an old like Linux box laying around with a serial port on it or an old Windows box. Um, is the uh, you know, old serial ports come in handy. Um, so the settings are there for Hyper Terminal or whatever your terminal program is, you know, baud rate 9600, data bit 8, parity none, stop it one, flow control none are the settings that you need. Uh, then you need to go in and start configuring PFSense. So uh, once you've put that compact flash card in, you've powered up the device, uh, the bootloader comes up and there's tons of options, and you say, yes, I want to configure VLANs. Um, I thought no for VLANs. You will just uh, um, no for VLANs, but just a word okay. to the wise. There's an auto configuration <laughs> option in there uh, that intern Mike and I learned the hard way is uh, <laughs> not something that you want to run. So it, you can tell uh, PFSense to, uh, because there's two Ethernet interfaces in there, and you run into this problem where you don't know which is which. So it says, well, plug in the LAN port, right? And then let me, let me PFSense, automatically configure the LAN port. And you say, okay, we'll go ahead and do that. And it goes in and it does the auto configuration and automatically assigns itself the IP address of 192.16.1.1. Now, if you already have a default gateway like I do, that's 192.16.1.1, uh, you've just created a massive denial of service attack for your internal network, which happened the other day. 
we rectified the problem and we followed <laughs> the steps in the show notes. Rectified? Damn near killed you. Rectum. Um, we fixed our rectum and then uh, went into the manual configuration and assigned the appropriate adapters, uh, uh, logical adapters to the physical adapters. See, my intern would have never let something like that happen. Yeah, right. So plus, you, plus you don't use a 192.168.1.1 space. See, I told you, he would have never let something like that happen. <laughs> the scary part is it, it starts up a DHCP server. And starts answering for things, yeah. So it's like well, total then it would have been a different denial of service attack. <laughs> it would have been a different <laughs> denial of service attack. So, uh, word to the wise that when you do that, uh, but it is nice because it does have two Ethernet interfaces. You know, one's going to be your LAN, one's mm-hmm. going to be your WAN. Uh, once you walk through this uh, basic configuration, you'll get a web address where you can navigate to one nine two one six eight one nine one or whatever you know your IP address is. You can log in with the default mm-hmm. username of admin and the password of pfSense change your default password, then do the rest of your con- firewall configuration uh, through the web interface. Um, you can also get a shell. In, in, well, you can enable SSH and then SSH into the firewall and get a shell, which presents you with a menu uh, mm-hmm. where you can perform different functionality. You can also then drop right into a shell uh, from that menu as well. Mm. Now, yep. so far, how does the performance of that device rate compared to... Uh, your Linksys router, I'm your D-Link sure. DIR. I, it's, um, a lot be- it's a lot beefier PFSense than... I've been for years. Go uh, ahead, and I, I have a similar setup. The only difference is that mine has three network interfaces instead of instead of two. And I can tell you it is a lot better yeah. than a Linksys box. When I was writing all of my uh, DNS enumeration stuff, I was killing the... Uh, all of my Linksys routers, I put Tomato on it, I put OpenWRT, they kept dying on me, I had to reboot them every time I was running my script. So what I did is I changed to PFSense a couple of years ago, been been extremely happy. In fact, one tip, um, with when running PFSense in the Alex box with the CF card, if you install Snort, or if you install Squid, the way it does, it will write to the CF card, and in a short time, it will kill it. Yeah. You should always be writing to it. One of the things you can do is you can buy a micro drive. There is a small hard drive the size of a compact flash yeah. card, <clears throat> and you can install it in there, and in fact, that will give you a, a bit more flexibility because then you're going to be able to start Snort, Squid on it, and you can use it then f- uh, also as kind of a UTM device. If you want to add all of that to it, uh, if you have the the Alex boxes with uh, three interfaces, you can actually even create a cluster mm-hmm. out of them with CARP. And what uh, one of the things you can do is you can probably have it going one of them through one provider and the other to another provider, and will actually do the auto balancing and everything of the connections to the outside world. Hmm. Yeah, and under the covers, PFSense is just FreeBSD. It's good to yep. get back to my FreeBSD roots. I, my first introduction to FreeBSD was uh, when I worked for a company many moons ago, and we used FreeBSD uh, running Squid to do all of our web proxying for the entire company. I was really impressed with uh, its performance in doing that. So it's kind of good to get back to my roots. I can't wait to... We haven't actually installed this as the actual firewall, so look for technical segments coming up that will detail some of the configuration there. But I'm, uh, I was really happy with the configuration process, and... I have a, a sexy red firewall that's uh, getting ready for production. There's guides and further reading there in the show notes. And, yep. uh, I, I mean, at this point, I'm pretty happy with my purchase. I haven't actually put it in production yet, but everything that I've seen so far um, links to a very solid platform uh, that yep. I'm really happy with. I'm really happy with the hardware. Uh, you no will major love issues. And, Carlos, you've been yep. running this platform for a while, so you're more yep, of a in, in fact, mine's silver, and i got to give a shout-out to the guys at Randestorm because it was a gift from the Randestorm guys. Hey, yeah. everybody have a drink for Random Storm. Man, I only got a T-shirt. Yay. Hey. Okay, with that, <laughs> we'll take a short commercial break and come back with the stories for this week. Slide your card here mm-hmm. um, for the donkey show. <laughs> <laughs> 